Thank you, Chairman Rush. Thank you, Congressman Stern. Thank you, Congress men and women who are present here today. My name is Doug Morris, <clears throat> and I'm Chairman and CEO of the Universal Music Group. Thank you for this opportunity to be part of a national dialogue on the impact of music in our lives and on our society. I certainly am not a stranger to the subject matter of this hearing. Lyrics and contents of songs are something that I've discussed with artists and media executives a great many times over too many years. I remember talking about it with my own parents and then with my kids as part of the inevitable tug between parents and teenagers. There were problems in our communities and it would be disingenuous to act <clears throat> as if music and the media have no influence on our culture. The question that my colleagues and I regularly wrestle with is what we should do when an artist chooses to push the envelope. How can we balance the artist's right to express himself or herself with our responsibility to parents, employees, and society at large? These are really important issues, and we thank the chairman for providing such a prominent forum to further and to further this conversation. First, some context. My company's music catalog covers everything from Motown and Mozart to U2, Pavarotti, Reba McIntyre, Common. We distribute titles that range from the high school musical to Cornell West's recent CD about contemporary society. Rap is but a small part of Universal's total release schedule each year. Universal's mission, my mission, is to offer music fans around the world a selection of voices and sounds from as diverse and dynamic a group of artists as possible, knowing full well that not everyone will like or appreciate every artist or every work by every artist. The reason I like working with artists is because they look at the world a little differently than you and I. Their unique perspective pushes us to consider things we might not otherwise even consider. From its inception, rap has always been one of the most reflective genres in our culture. Perhaps it is the hardest willingness to hold up for review and scrutiny the more disturbing elements of the human condition. There's been a great deal of discussion about three particularly incendiary words sometimes used in rap, the B, H, and N words. I should point out that the overwhelming majority of the music in the Universal Catalog does not contain those words. Some rappers do use highly charged words, and that of course, has led to this debate. From rappers themselves like Chameleon Air in his new song, which is quite funny, it's called The Hip Hop Police, to discussions on Oprah and BET to op-ed ads. The words used by some are prompting a very important dialogue that will tell us some things about ourselves, our society now, and the future of our society. Although I am the chairman of my company, the artist's words are certainly not my words. I have not lived their lives. I did not grow up in their homes or neighborhoods. And I certainly do not wish to control their emotions or their opinions. Much of the music is made by young people many struggling to find their way. Like many young people their age, they are rebellious, angry, filled with testosterone. Unfortunately, many of us grow up to be our parents. Maybe not unfortunately, but that's a fact. 
Their words reflect this. Other times, their words are the most incisive commentaries on the problems plaguing our communities. I don't take credit for the observations and expressions made in songs that we love, nor for songs <clears throat> that contain lyrics that you and I may find offensive. But I do have a compact with every artist that we sign that I will support their art and I will support their right to express themselves. Importantly, this commitment, this commitment extends to the public as well. Whether it's parents, fans, or critics, <laughs> If artists choose to use explicitly, highly, explicit, <laughs> highly charged words, we will stick at the song with a parental advisory label. We are committed to ensuring that music buyers get a heads up when a song containing words or themes that might not be suitable for all audiences. The people at our record labels who review the lyrics come from different walks of life. Their decisions are not made in a vacuum. Context is important. The cultural climate has an impact. There are regular conversations with radio outlets, radio programmers, and TV exhibitors. And if the labels decide to stick to a song, edited versions are typically made available for retail, as well as radio and television. If a work contains the parental advisory sticker, our record companies follow the RIAA guidelines that limit when and how we market our music. In other words, we do not market explicit lyrics anywhere near young people. We believe we mostly get it right through the stickering process and by making available edited editions, sanitized versions that address the feedback we get from consumers and our distribution partners. I open my remarks today by talking about the national dis discussion taking place about the impact of music on our culture and our responsibilities as a company. I think it's really a healthy one for all concerned, but as we debate this issue, I am mindful of an important principle. We pay a price for the first. Mr. Yeah. Morris, you've exceeded your time. Please conclude your comments. We do have to get over the vote, so we've got just a couple more. As a matter of fact, the time is up for us to go vote. We got to run it over there before they okay. bang the gamble. So will you please bring your, your comments to a close, please? Certainly. Did he say? Yeah, please bring your comments to a close. Okay, okay I'll just conclude. Finish. I have one last paragraph. <laughs> we pay a price for the First Amendment. The price includes allowing highly charged words and images in our music, even if they sometimes offend and cause pain. But consider the alternative. We pay a price, but it's insignificant compared to the ability to speak our minds. I thank you today for inviting us. I'm very pleased to be here, and so be it. Thank you. The committee stands in recess until the conclusion of the last vote. We've got four votes. We'll, we'll begin again immediately after the conclusion of the fourth vote.